Man, what a week it was of college football. It was the last week of college football before conference championship week. Now, there are only two ranked matchups, and it seemed like we're in for a pretty underwhelming rivalry weekend because of the lack of big games. But let me tell you, Week 13 did not disappoint. To start off, on Friday night, you had the huge Civil War game between the Oregon Ducks and the Oregon State Beavers. And then the next morning, you had to tune in for the huge game, which is called the game between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines. But then you also had games like Georgia versus Georgia Tech and Alabama versus Auburn and other top games that were better than expected. But before I get my takeaways on week 13, let me remind you guys to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and also turn on notifications for more daily uploads like this one. But without further ado, let's get my takeaways from week 13 of college football. Now let's start off with my first takeaway of the week. And I gotta start off saying Oregon has been getting more impressive every week. With the win, Oregon set up a huge Pac-12 championship game rematch against the Washington Huskies. This rematch was a game everybody has been anticipating, and it's going to be a fun matchup. Oregon dominated at home against the Oregon State team that has been really solid this year. Oregon proves week in and week out that they are a legit team. And as of now, they are around 9-point favorites going into their game against Washington, so that's very interesting considering Washington beat them the first time they played. But there is no doubt about it that Oregon has looked like the better team as of lately. But I don't think people should doubt this Washington team either, as they have proven that they have Oregon's number in the past. This game is really a game with playoff hopes on the line for both teams. And I will be doing a preview on this game very soon, so tune in for that video. But we are all in for a hell of a game between the Washington Huskies, a team that has shown they are very clutch, and they have proven they can win close games this year. And they will be playing against the Oregon Ducks, a team that has looked very dominant on both sides of the ball lately. Now my second takeaway of the video is that Michigan has now won three straight against Ryan Day and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Let's start off with saying there's got to be a question on if Ryan Day has potential to lose his job at Ohio State. Maybe there's a chance, but honestly I don't see why they could fire Ryan Day. Because my question is, who else are they going to find for that job? Ohio State is a team that has been consistently good, but the last three years Ohio State just happened to lose to Michigan. Ryan Day knows that he needed that win, and there's no doubt about it that he's feeling a lot of pressure on his shoulder after losing to Michigan again. And I feel like Ryan Day is the right coach for this team. But when is there going to come a time when all of his fans turn on him and he keeps losing in the big games? But right now, Ohio State is doing an awesome job recruiting, and going into next year, it's not going to get easier with all the teams joining the Big Ten. But it will be interesting to see what happens with Ryan Day, and if Ryan Day can get his team to win the big games. But if history keeps repeating itself the next couple years... Maybe we see Ryan Day get fired. But as of now, I don't know how I feel about the whole situation. But anyways, it was a good win for Michigan, and it was a much-needed win because with the loss, it was almost certain Michigan had no shot at the playoffs. My next takeaway is that Florida State is in trouble. I say that Florida State is in trouble because they did not look good against Florida. Now, the defense for Florida State has helped them through the season, and they continue to give the offense trouble and get to the quarterback, and they're really good at pressuring the quarterback. But Florida State's offense looked really lackluster against Florida. Florida is a team that is one of the worst in the SEC, and I do believe a 13-0 Florida State will still be ranked ahead any one-loss team. But that was a very underwhelming game against Florida, and the committee will not like that performance. And Tate Roadmaker really needs to play better, and the offensive line needs to protect them better if they want to beat Louisville. I'm not counting out that Florida State can beat Louisville, but if they do, there's got to be a worry with them in the playoffs and who they will match up against. Now, my next takeaway is that the Alabama Crimson Tide were just straight up lucky this week. Alabama is a team that has looked a lot better ever since their loss to Texas, and I do believe that they would win the rematch, but that performance against Auburn compared to Texas's performance against Texas Tech says different. There's absolutely no way Alabama deserved to win that game, but ultimately they did win that game, and they still are 11-1 with a shot to beat Georgia and make the playoffs, but if they want to do it, they can't play like they did against Auburn. And let's be real, Auburn lost that game. Alabama did not win that game. How in the world does Auburn give up fourth and goal from the 30 and why in the world was the defensive line just standing there watching? You have to pressure the quarterback, or what do you expect will happen? Now I get they were having the defensive line staying back to keep spies on Jalen Murrow because they didn't want to give up a huge run, but what are the odds of Jalen Murrow running past all of the other eight guys on the field and even getting past the pressure in the first place? Pressure the quarterback and at least make him work for it. But nope, of course, Auburn is the team to lose like that. And it's a week after getting bullied around by the New Mexico State Aggies. Anyways, I'm not saying Alabama has no shot at beating Georgia because I think Alabama is a dangerous team if they do play their A game, but if they play like how they did against Auburn when they play Georgia, they will have absolutely no shot. 
My next takeaway is actually that I'm so glad that James Madison and Jayville State is getting the recognition that they deserve. The NCAA just announced that because of the lack of six win teams this year, they will let James Madison and Jayville State play in a bowl game. I'm really excited about this, more so James Madison, because they have had one of the biggest, if not the biggest, step ups from the FCS. They finished 11 1, which is huge for a team like James Madison. And I would like to see a bowl win or even just a bowl appearance from James Madison because they definitely deserve it. And my next takeaway is that Arizona has to be the hottest team in the country. I just got to give this team recognition real quick because they've been very impressive this year. And they could very well beat Washington if they did get that rematch in the Pac-12 championship game. But ultimately, they won't get the rematch because the Ducks won that game. So it will be Oregon versus Washington, which I think will be the better matchup. But that's beside the point. My point is that Arizona went from 1-11 just a couple years ago to go on 9-3 and and being so close to making the Pac-12 championship game. And what a turnaround it has been for this Arizona team. Not just in the last couple years, but on the season. At the start of the season, it seemed like this Arizona team was going to finish 5-7 and or 6-6. and But then they started beating ranked Pac-12 teams and dominated Utah. And it's a shame we didn't see a hot Arizona team versus the Oregon Ducks. Because that matchup was not scheduled on the year. And Oregon might have actually dodged the bullet not having to play Arizona. But still, what a great year for this Arizona team. And their quarterback is also underappreciated and not talked about enough. If you don't know what I'm talking about with Noah Fajita, just go watch some of the clips and some of the plays he can make on YouTube. You'll find so many highlights. I'm excited for the future of Arizona in the Big 12, and it'll be interesting to see what they can do, and they have a young quarterback who can lead the way. Now, my next takeaway is that the future of the Oregon State Beavers might be in trouble. Now, a lot of you know this by now, but if you don't, it was announced that Oregon State's head coach took the coaching spot at Michigan State. This could be good news for Michigan State because Jonathan Smith did a really good job at his alma mater, Oregon State, building them from the ground up. But Oregon State, without a head coach and possibly without a conference and being left out of the conversation, they might start going downhill. And it's sad because we are finally seeing some light from this Oregon State program. Because the last couple seasons, they've been consistently ranked in the top 25 and have had some pretty good seasons. But is this the end for Oregon State? Could we see people transfer out and follow their head coach to Michigan State? Could we see fans stop supporting this team? Honestly, I don't know, but the future is looking tough for the Oregon State Beavers. My next takeaway also has to do with more drama around the head coaching spot. And I have to wonder, is UCLA also in trouble? This UCLA team has been a team that has looked really close to taking their next step. They got a five-star freshman quarterback in Dante Moore. That is a bright future. But with Chip Kelly possibly leaving and UCLA moving to the Big Ten, are we even going to see UCLA go 6-6 and on this season? Are they even going to make a bowl game? I talked in the past about me being high on this UCLA team and their future, but I'm really getting more unsure about UCLA's future, and Dante Moore might even transfer out, so I'm not sure what to expect. But this UCLA team has looked super unmotivated lately, with a blowout loss to California this past weekend, and a loss to an Arizona State team that has been garbage this year. And Arizona State is a team that is in rebuild mode. But anyways, I don't know what the future holds for Chip Kelly or UCLA. We'll have to wait and find out. It's going to be an interesting offseason with all the moves happening. And my next takeaway is that the national title winner is really hard to predict right now. And a lot of teams have looked fraudulent this year. Now this kind of leads on with my takeaway about the bad performances by Alabama and Florida State. But if we are going to look at all the bad performances by top teams, one that really stands out is Washington's close win against Washington State. And are they going to be too tired from all the fighting they have had to do this year when they play Oregon? It might be a long day for Washington when they play Oregon. But Washington continues to win games over and over again. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. But when are the close games going to catch up to them? Washington needs to get their offense going. But also another game that may have been surprising by some is Georgia only beating Georgia Tech by 8. I'm not overlooking this game too much as I am the other games because they were controlling that game for the most part. Georgia Tech had a late run in the fourth quarter and an interception at the goal line when Georgia was about to put the game away. But Georgia has had dominating wins against top 25 teams like Ole Miss and Tennessee, and they also beat a top 10 Missouri team who the committee is really high on right now. And right now, I do think they're the best team in the country, but there still has to be some questions on the team on if they aren't as good as the last couple of years. And their defense did give up some big run plays to Georgia Tech, so there's been some questions with this rush defense. But we'll have to wait and see what happens when they play Alabama next weekend. Because that might answer some more questions. And I expect Georgia to come out and play their A game. But my whole point is that it's hard to predict who will win the Natty this year. Because no team stands out with no weaknesses. Every single team I've watched has had at least one or two weaknesses that stand out. 
And that's what I think is going to make this postseason special because we don't know what to expect with so many teams still alive in the college football race. And my last takeaway of the video that stands out is that this postseason starting with conference championship week has the chance to be one of the greatest ever. We have huge games next week with playoff implications. Two top 10 matchups between Alabama and Georgia. And if Alabama wins, it's going to make this postseason even more crazy. And then the next top 10 matchup, which actually has a chance to be a top 5 matchup, is Oregon and Washington, which is probably going to be the biggest Pac-12 championship game of all time. And now I don't want to talk too much about Conference Championship Week because I do have more videos coming this week on Conference Championship Week. But I have to say, with every Conference Championship game this week being a top 20 matchup, and with so many teams being alive, this postseason might have some great teams being left out. And it might break a lot of people's hearts to see their team get left out. But every playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game will be a must-see game. And I can't wait for all of the drama and action to start. Because it's about to go down, let's just say that. And I actually have one more takeaway on the video. My last takeaway wasn't the last takeaway. This one is actually the last takeaway. And it's pretty simple. And it's that you guys should like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also turn on notifications for more daily uploads like this one. And tune in tomorrow for my weekly predictions because I will be predicting every conference championship game this week. And also, I will have more videos on conference championship week coming up. So tune in for more. But that's going to do it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed and peace out, guys.